as everyone starts coming in, please feel free to continue to introduce yourself within the chat. I'm really excited to get started and talk about fall fundraising strategies and ideas. I know summer, it almost feels like summer just started, but it is the time to start thinking about fall if you haven't yet done so. My name is Lisa Gelfrin. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager here at Mighty Cause. Before we begin, just a couple of housekeeping uh, things. Uh, throughout the webinar, I'll try to pause and answer any questions that do come up. Um, if so, if you could add those questions into the questions tool in your Zoom panel, that would be great. I'll also try to just keep up with the chat if any questions do come up there, but that's the easiest way for me to keep track of all of the questions that come in. And at the end, we'll have dedicated time to go over uh, any other questions that anyone has. This webinar is being recorded and we'll, we will be sending a, a slide deck and a recording of this webinar um, afterwards in an email. All right, so before I get into fall fundraising strategies, just a little introduction about Mighty Cause for those of you that are unfamiliar with Mighty Cause or brand new to Mighty Cause. Um, we've been in the nonprofit space for a while, since 2006. We're one of the biggest technology providers for giving events across the country. Um, and we are a platform that's really built for small to medium nonprofits um, that we've tried to create a platform where we're creating the technology and you're creating the impact. Um, so making it as easy as possible for you to accomplish all of your goals and fundraising. So we have a bunch of different tools available on the platform and throughout this webinar, I'll talk a little bit about them. Um, some of the our tools range from peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, fundraiser templates, um, integrations, uh, analytics and reporting, donor management. Um, so there's a lot of stuff on the platform, a lot of tools and features that again are there to help facilitate all of your fundraising needs. All right, so let's just go through the agenda briefly. So I'll first going through I'll first go through some fall fundraising basics uh, that we'll then go through fundraising types on the platform. Um, when we talk about fundraising ideas, um, it'll have a little bit more context when we're talking about different fundraising types. And then um, we'll have some time at the end for Q&A. All right, so let's jump into fall fundraising basics. So um, this year, fall runs from September 22nd to December 21st. So pretty lengthy period of time. And I'm sure um, you may be surprised it goes even towards the end of December. Um, and as we all know, in the nonprofit space, fall is the biggest season for fundraising for organizations. Uh, and if we just look at this report here, this is from MNR Benchmarks, their 2024 report. What they found is that overall 34% of online revenue from one-time gifts came in during December 2023, and then the next highest was November um, at 15%. So as we see here, the data also proves how essential uh, the fall season is in terms of giving. So why is it important to fundraise in the fall outside of the data telling us that uh, there's a lot of one-time um, donors or a lot of gifts that are happening during the fall season? One, it's your opportunity to gain new donors. Um, this is the time of the year with Giving Tuesday. Um, there is an incentive for donors to give during this time of year. So this is your opportunity to attract these donors, to attract the individuals that are looking to make gifts before the end of the year for taxes. Um, so this is an ample opportunity to attract new donors. It's also your opportunity to be creative. Um, as we all know, there's a lot going on during the fall season. And um, even if we talk about the window in November of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, Giving Tuesday, we have Halloween, et cetera. Um, there's a lot going on in the fall. So it's also an opportunity to be creative and stick out from the crowd and showcase your impact. What does your organization do? How is it important in your community? Fall fundraising is also an essential piece in terms of end of year fundraising. It's your opportunity to build momentum into end of year fundraising, and it also helps kickstart any um, 
any fundraising that you will plan on in the new year. And lastly, um, it's your opportunity to be visible, share awareness, and join the kind of conversation that happens in the fall in terms of Forgiving Tuesday, for giving during that time of year. Um, it's an opportunity to unite with your community and foster stronger relationships with um, your supporters. All right, so um, before I get into any fundraising ideas, uh, or strategies, I like to start first at the basics because I think this is the most important part when you're thinking of any fundraising campaigns, when you're planning any fundraising campaigns, it's really helpful to map out or to get an idea what are your goals for your campaign. So consider what outcomes are most meaningful for your organization because I'm sure if we pulled everyone in this webinar, everyone would have different goals. And that's from um, your total fundraising total to maybe you wanna receive more recurring donors. Maybe you want to uh, increase your board involvement. Everyone's going to have different goals in mind. Um, so you wanna think about um, exactly what are you trying to fundraise for? Um, you wanna factor in any fundraising gaps from the previous year. Um, like I said, uh, let's say you realize you don't really have much sustainable revenue um, that you received last year. Maybe you do wanna focus on recurring giving this year. Um, and part of that is really going into your data and looking at last year uh, and how you performed and what you want to improve upon for this year. So I also really like to talk about messaging in terms of campaigns, because I think this is so helpful when you are trying to build language or communication around a campaign. Um, I think it's really helpful to first think about, as a nonprofit, what are what is your key message? What do you want your audience to know about your nonprofit in general in 2024? Um, because this is going to be the starting point for your overall communications for your campaign. So what is your mission? What are you working towards? Um, so key messages act as a thread that run through all of your communications about your nonprofit. So in this example, I have Lisa's food pantry key messages. So we have, we believe that people have a right to be free from hunger and that food is a human right. Communities have the responsibility to care for their own and our pantry is a way to care for people in our community. Natural disasters hit the most undeserved people in our community the hardest, and we are committed to helping them make it through. So that's just some key three points about our nonprofit. Now, we are going to use that to kind of apply it to our fall campaign, right? So once we have the bigger picture, we can then dig deep into, all right, given those three key messages about our nonprofit for our campaign, what are we trying to achieve related to those key messages? Um, because those key messages, they're going to get filtered down to their campaign messaging. Um, and it's going to speak to your mission um, and to your core values and how it's related to your current campaign. Um, you want to keep them relatively broad. You can develop talking points with facts, figures, and stats. Um, but here's an example of how you would then message a campaign related to your overall nonprofit key messages. So we are raising $10,000 so we can afford to expand our food pantry's physical space and feed even more people in our community. There is increased need for our service in the community, and we must grow to meet the need. We want to provide 100,000 meals by the end of 2024, and this campaign will set up set us up to do that. So as you see, it's getting more specific in regards to your overall goal. All right, and I have a little uh, tasker challenge for everyone here. So a couple of things that I think are really helpful in terms of when you're thinking about the messaging or what you want to accomplish in terms of your fall campaign. What does your nonprofit do? How would a donation affect your organization for your fall campaign? And how can a donor support your organization? And I always like to say, think of how you would describe this to a child. So I'm gonna put just a minute on the clock um, or two minutes. And if everyone wants to just take a minute and think about 
how you would respond to this in just a brief sentence and just put it in the chat and then we'll read some of those out loud. So I'm just gonna put a minute and a half on the clock. Okay, I'm going to stop there. All right, and so I'm just going to read a couple out loud. So we support and encourage and equip families who are raised, raising orphan children. Oops, sorry, the chat's going. Raising orphan children through foster care, adoption, and um, kinship care. Awesome. Um, we provide quality care and services for the disabled community. Your donation supports our efforts to provide housing, food, and activities. Awesome. Um, Give and Serve provides free educational services and programs to Bocas del Toro youth. Amazing. I hope it's helpful to see everyone else's responses and how they're describing it. Again, I think this is um, really helpful in terms of when you're thinking of communication, when you're thinking of what is the kind of foundation of your campaign, you want to go back to this. Is your campaign um, really going to show the impact? Is is it really going to get across what your organization's about and how a donation would affect your um, nonprofit? All right, so we're going to talk about different types of fundraisers um, because when we're talking about, when I'll go through some fundraising ideas, um, I'm going to be talking about a couple of different fundraising types that are on Mighty Cause. Um, and so just to make sure we're all on the same page, um, so one of the types of fundraising campaigns on our platform or fundraising pages on our uh, platform is called a fundraising campaign. And it's just an individual fundraising page. It, page. It's a basic fundraiser um, where your nonprofit is just directly solicitating donations um, from supporters. So um, a fundraising campaign should have focused messaging. So your nonprofit can stay in control of your message and focus on your cause. So it's really perfect for raising funds for awareness of a specific program or service that you have. Um, so maybe you have, you know, um, a, a literacy program within your organization. Uh, maybe you want to set up a dedicated page for your literacy po program um, so that you can highlight it and donors can go directly there and support your campaign and your program. Um, with a fundraising campaign, um, it, you're not recruiting any individuals necessarily um, to fundraise. It's really just a way for people to make a donation. All right. So uh, two different types of other fundraising pages or campaigns that you can utilize for fall fundraising is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, so if you're not familiar with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, it's any fundraiser that involves asking your supporters to fundraise on your nonprofit's behalf. So it's really great for engaging supporters in a new, different way because it's a different ask. You're asking them to participate and not necessarily donate. 
Um, it allows for friendly competition if that's something you want to utilize as um, you know, a way to motivate um, donors to give. Um, it's also a great donor acquisition tool because as we see in this diagram, what peer-to-peer -peer fundraising does is if I'm participating in a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, campaign for your organization, I'm going to send my fundraiser to my friends, my family, my coworkers. I'm going to ask them to support me in my fundraising campaign for your organization. And not only that, it's also my opportunity to share my story of why my, why I am connected to your organization. Why is your organization so important? Maybe I uh, adopted my dog from your rescue, or maybe I'm an alumni from one of your programs, um, or maybe I directly benefited from one of your services. It's an opportunity to have the people that you directly affect help share your story and your impact. So two different types of peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers that we have on our platform is you can utilize an individual fundraising page. And it's, so it's when a supporter just creates a page on the platform and they are going to be sending that to their friends and their family to make a, a donation. Um, we also have teams on our platform. So, um, you know, if you have a group of individuals such as, uh, for example, your board members, if they want to come together and raise money um, and have a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, you can use a team fundraising page. It's for a group of supporters that want to work together to hit a fundraising goal as a team. Um, so this page is going to be the central page and each team member will have their own individual page like you see right here. And it will all be connected to your team page. So this is really great if you do want some of that friendly competition, or again, you want to have um, you know, everyone really fundraising collectively um, as a group to hit that, that goal. Um, and the last type of uh, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page that we have on our platform is called events. So if you have, let's say, multiple teams, you have multiple groups of people that are looking to participate, this is where events would be helpful because um, let's say you're, uh, well, I'll show you an example right here. So this is a great example of how everything works together in terms of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on the platform. So we have uh, on the left side, our readathon, so that's our event page. Within our event, we have each grade within the school has their own team page. So we have the kindergarten team, and then each student within that grade has their own individual page. So each student can raise money within the their grade, and then the grade can also the different grades can compete with each other or motivate each other to give. All right, so a couple of differences between um, fundraisers and, fun and teams and events is that fundraisers, again, they're really a standalone page. They can be used for crowdfunding um, or they can be used as a, a general campaign page if you have an, a program, as I mentioned. Um, and teams and events are collective. They're for group fundraising. They have leaderboards. Individuals can join themselves. There's fundraiser templates, which we'll get into, um, and you can also manage participants through there. All right, now that we've gone through some of the, the kind of basics of that, that functionality or uh, the, the organization of those pages, let's talk about some fundraising ideas for the fall. All right, so one of the biggest things that you want to think about um, in terms of fall fundraising is Giving Tuesday, right? So Giving Tuesday is the highest volume giving day in the country, if not the world. Um, and it's a day that's really built to do good and globally year round. Um, it's a huge engagement opportunity because it's a dedicated pay, a dedicated day for nonprofits and for giving back. Um, so it's also an opportunity to really start that year end messaging about your organization's impact. All right. Uh, and if you haven't yet thought about what you want to do for Giving Tuesday, um, we do host our own Giving Tuesday event. Um, so uh, you can register to sign up. Registration is completely free. Um, 
and it takes place uh, on Giving Tuesday, December 3rd. Uh, we have prizes. Um, we also have a lot of tools and resources available to you. You'll also have access to um, a lot of our tools and features to, to help make the most of Giving Tuesday. Um, you'll We have live customer support all throughout the day for 24 hours. Um, and yeah, I think that covers everything with Giving Tuesday. But this is a big opportunity for giving. And if you haven't considered what you're doing, you really want to think about what you plan on doing for that day. And we'll talk about some ideas that you can utilize for Giving Tuesday. All right. So um, one of the things in terms of one idea in terms of for fall fundraising that you can center your campaign around is a special date um, that occurs in the fall. So you want to look for important dates that you can use to for as an excuse to fundraise. So this could be a board member's birthday. This could be an awareness day, an awareness month, um, a specific day, a federal day, um, because this is a way for you to, it's easy communication that you can use um, within your language. It's a way to give a reason why your donors should give, right? It's, um, you know, Children's Cancer Awareness Month, this is the opportunity to give. Um, and it's a way to, again, increase awareness about what your organization does. So I've compiled a, 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 a list of some uh, fall holidays and dates that you can utilize for fall fundraising. This is just a bit of them. If you go to nationaltoday.com, there's a whole list of different holidays and awareness months. Um, they're sometimes very specific. So you may just want to think about um, heading over there and looking at exactly the different holidays and see if there's something that you can utilize for your organization. But I just wrote a couple down just to kind of start brainstorming and thinking through some of these um, special dates. So uh, we have World Letter Writing Day, National Service Dog Month, Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, Labor Day, National Food Bank Day, World Literacy Day, National Grandparents Day, First, it's the first day of National Hispanic Heritage Month, Oktoberfest, National Public Land Day, Child Health Day, World Mental Health Day, Indigenous Peoples Day, Make a Difference Day, National Pumpkin Day, and Halloween. And then we have National Children's Month, Veterans Day, World Kindness Day, National Hiking Day, Thanksgiving, Giving Tuesday, International Volunteer Day. We have the December Solstice, Christmas, and New Year's Eve. So again, this is just a, a curated list of some of the holidays that you can utilize, uh, but definitely check out nationaltoday.com to see if there's any other awareness months or days that you can utilize. So um, I pulled up this uh, campaign as an example of how you can create a campaign centered around uh, an awareness month or a specific date uh, within the fall season. So Buddy Cruise is a nonprofit that provides edu educational opportunities and resources for families while promoting awareness and advocacy and inclusion for individuals with special needs. So this is their annual walk that they have every year in October. Um, this is related to Down Syndrome Awareness Month. Um, and the annual walk, the purpose of it is to raise funds for individuals with Down syndrome um, and special needs. So uh, individuals could form a team and raise at least $100 and they could cr have incentives such as um, within this um, cruise that they have every year, they will have a special ceremony on board. Um, passengers would be invited to participate in fun events. Um, so this is a way that um, this organization uh, utilized uh, Down Syndrome Awareness Month for their campaign, really putting that at the forefront um, and again, creating that um, incentive, um, incentive for donors to give. Um, this is another example of a way to utilize, again, an awareness month or a day. This is the Auto-Inflammatory Alliance with the Auto-Inflammatory Awareness Month. So they hosted a lighting ceremony in support of International Auto-Inflammatory Awareness Month, and they created this fundraising page where um, supporters could come and donate and come to the lighting visual um, and, again, support the organization for their cause. All right, I'm just gonna pause here if there's any questions so far. Right, 
I don't think so. All right, so we will continue on. So I created some examples to kind of show again how you can utilize a date or awareness month in terms of a fundraising campaign within the fall. So for example, National Grandparents Day, you could create a family fundraising event at your nonprofit um, and give, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just making sure my screen's still sharing. Okay, it is. Um, Um, where you can give tours or plan activities for kids and grandparents and parents at your facilities. World Letter Writing Day, you can send out letters to supporters announce announcing the kickoff um, to your fundraising campaign. National Pumpkin Day, this can be an opportunity to host a pumpkin carving or painting competition. You could have supporters um, vote by making a donation and designating their gift to the pumpkin uh, of their choice that they love the most or they um want to support the most. Um, for Halloween, you can have a costume run where you can um, have a 5K or a walk and you can invite families and their furry friends to uh, wear their costumes and have a walk or run for your organization. National Hiking Day, you can work with a local park or your local Department of Natural Resources or a local farm that has a trail or corn maze um, and invite supporters to have a fun, um, a fun day of raising money for a good cause. Uh, so these are just a couple of ways in which you can incorporate different fundraising dates with a campaign. So in terms of um, doing, um, when you're thinking of a strategy for your fall fundraising, you can also focus on a timely program. So tell the story of what your nonprofit does and the particular program you're raising for in this specific time. So you want to focus on a tangible donation experiences. Donors love buying and donating items, give them the experience of picking out and buying specific items with, you know, clever use of donation descriptions. You want to tie them into your program's needs. Um, so this is your opportunity to get creative in terms of how you want to hook donors in for um, like a timely program. And I'll show an example right here. All right, so this is the Barton Institute for Community Action. This is their back to school campaign. So this is a bit of combining the event, but this is a very timely program, right? We are trying to raise money for um, a specific time period for back to school. Um, this village, in, um, the um, Barton Institute for Community Action, um, it's a holistic family um, support center for refugee and immigrant families in Colorado. Um, they help support um, the well-being um, of families by uh, providing early uh, childhood education, mental health services, et cetera. Um, so this specific back to school campaign is really to support their families for that time when going back to school. So very timely campaign related to their specific organization. So you wanna think about what is, what are specific um, times or what are, what are the specific needs for your organization at this moment? Um, I also have a screenshot on the right side, as you see, where they clearly also demonstrate exactly how much a donation will affect their organization or impact their organization. So they say, help us meet our goal of raising $100,000 by the end of the year. And they say $50, one day of a child's education, $100 translated materials for a parent education event. If we jump down, um, 1500 one month of a child's education. $20,000, a one year of a child's education. So again, when you have also these donation descriptions and when you're very clear and specific about the impact that a donation amount will have, the more um, incentivized a donor is to give or even give more because they see, oh, you know, $50 a day is one child's education. But if I just donate 
you know, a hundred dollars, I can, it will be translated materials for a parent education event. I think that's a lot more important. So I'm going to choose to give my hundred dollar donation um, because I see that the impact that that has. Um, Uh, so fundraise thons are definitely something that are uh, year round, but I think in particular with the fall, there's a lot of opportunities to use them to your advantage. Um, there are so many different fundraise thons that you can create. It can be unique to your organization. So it can be a write a thon, uh, read a thon, dance a thon, cycle a thon, every sort of iteration you can think of. Um, you can find an angle that makes sense to your organization. So it doesn't have to be a run-a-thon or bike-a-thon as you normally, uh, you know, see. It can be anything specific to your organization. Um, I've definitely seen write-a-thons, art-a-thons, and they're really impactful because of the organization's um, mission. And the reason why a thons are so popular is because they get participants really excited and engaged. Um, it creates a community um, environment. Um, and it's also your opportunity to work with local organiz local companies, organizations, um, and build, again, a community um, in support of your uh, fundraise thon. So I have an example here of Van Meter Companies. So Van Meter Companies a Foundation has an annual cornhole challenge that invites participants to participate in some friendly competition of cornhole to help support a local cause. The fundraise will go directly to providing um, new townhomes and neighbors in need. And they actually work with local organizations like Habitat for Humanity um, to make this um, come true. So their cornhole, they invited individuals who wanted to participate in the cornhole to create their own fundraising pages um, and register for the event. And to make the process really seamless and easy for participants, they created a fundraiser template where individuals um, can go onto the platform or onto your event page um, click to create a fundraiser and all of the information on their page is already auto populated for them based off this template. So it makes the setup process as easy as possible for participants. So it's a seamless, um, it's a seamless process. This is another example of a thon, as we would say. Um, so this is Challenge to Conquer Cancer annual bike-a-thon in September. It's a seven-day relay ride that takes place from Greenville, South Carolina to Lewiston, Maine. So a small group of cyclists um, annually take this um, journey, this bike ride journey, um, and they have, as you see, fundraising pages where friends and family can support them um, to raise money for their organization. And lastly, this is Campbell PTA, their PTA fall fundraiser. Um, so the PTA fundraiser uh, decided to host a week of daily classroom and individual group challenges for students to raise money for the school and the PTA. Uh, students and teachers were encouraged to raise money um, for uh, for the event um, with different prizes, and I'll show that in, uh, in a second. Um, so each teacher had their own fundraising page where, again, friends, family could go and donate to their child's classroom to support them. Um, so I think what they did a great job here in doing is really laying out and providing different challenges for um, for the the. Uh, PTA fundraiser. So as we see here, just a couple of different um, designated competitions that they had to incentivize giving is um, the class in each grade that raised the most money wins a face painting fast pass for fun fair teachers receive their um, to receive the and teachers receive their favorite drink. The class in each grade that raises the most money wins popsicles on the playground. Teachers will get recess duty covered and classrooms that raise over $1,000 will receive a sweet treat. Teachers will get lunch. Um, so um, some of these, you know, are a larger where it's $1,000 and some of them are more simple in terms of face painting fast pass at the fun fair. Um, but they 
it, it they're all the motivating donors to incentivize uh, and to grow giving on that specific week um, and for their challenge. So when you're thinking about hosting an event, um, it's really your opportunity to create engagement with your community. As you see, like at the ACE PTA fundraiser, it's an opportunity for friends and family um, and um, everyone at the school to come together and support the school. And hosting an event doesn't have to be cost. I know when we think about these events, there's a lot of management to consider. Um, there's a lot, but it doesn't have to be as complicated or um, as big as hosting a bike a for example. This can be a simple, you know, meetup that you have of a public library, your local park, your a local business. So focus on what you can execute because if it's something that you think is really difficult or far reaching, you're not going to be successful at it. And maybe if this is your first time hosting an event, it's your opportunity to try something small and that you think you can accomplish. Also, one of the benefits of events is that you can have it ticketed. Um, you can offer different um, incentives for individuals to be there, but then charge a fee in terms of um, attending the event. So when you are considering creating an event within the fall, one thing you want to think about is um, using text to give or SMS to re, um, have donation making super simple and easy at your event because uh, you don't want a situation where you have one laptop and it's really hard for people to give. Um, on Mighty Cause, we have text to give so you can create a keyword for your organization. So we have like furry friends 24. All donors have to do is just text um, our, our text to give number with the keyword, and then they will get an automatic link to give to your fundraising page. Um, so it makes it super easy and simple to for giving at, at a live event. Um, so here's just an example of like what a sign you could have at your live event in terms of making it super easy and simple for donors to give um, at your event. So this is another example of an event, and this is not peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, this is uh, just an individual fundraising page. So this is the Mile High Rowing Club Halloween Ergathon, again, also using a kind of a special date uh, in conjunction with their campaign. Um, so this is the Mile High Rowing Club largest fundraiser of the year, and the club's primary method of earning the funds needed for different gear that they have throughout the year. Um, donors who donated were supporting their rowers that were participating in the Ergathon challenge. Um, and this all culminated to an Ergathon event that took place in October. So a couple of different ideas when you're thinking about different events that you can host, um, stand alone. So one is, um, bonfire, um, bonfire and s'mores. Uh, so you can plan a community bonfire at night with, um, you can have live music, storytelling, or s'more kits for sale. Um, you can simply also just have hot apple cider, um, and you can charge an admission fee and also offer something like hot cocoa or coffee um, or tea, etc. Uh, trivia night, you can host a fall theme trivia night at a local pub or community center. Find um, You can work with a local venue or, again, utilize a public uh, park if, if that's possible or, again, an area that you were able to do that, um, a backyard. Um, and you can, for the trivia night, you can host your, make it fall themed or related to your organization um, and make it as fun as possible. Um, Another one on the list is a turkey trot, so, or so you can create a fun walk uh, that has a fall theme like turkey trot or pumpkin run and encourage participants to dress in costume, you can offer prizes for best dressed uh, walkers or runners, uh, and you can utilize our team fundraising page and have donors support their friends or family that are participating. Another um, idea is a leaf rake up, so you can orderize organize leaf raking services where you can have volunteers or board members or your staff, um, your supporters 
um, volunteer to rake leaves for a donation. You can go around your community and offer to rake leaves in exchange for a donation for your organization. And also No Shave November. So this campaign was actually originally started to bring awareness to cancer in November, uh, but you can utilize this idea and make it last an entire month. Um, it's a great way to engage, um, you know, if you're looking to, uh, you know, specifically if your organization is related to fathers, um, this is a great way to engage that donor base. Um, and this is also a really great uh, social media fundraising campaign. You can have participants share updates throughout the entire month, use a hashtag, um, share on their uh, Instagram or their Facebook, um, and make it fun by offering prizes for different categories of beards or beard length. Um, so again, that's kind of, um, it's not a physical event, but it's an event you can have that's, that's virtual or um, anyone can participate anywhere. So another type of fundraising campaign you can do is creating a contest um, because this is a way to incite your donor base and it can be turned into a fundraising extravaganza. So um, most commonly what we see with fundraising contests on the platform is that donors are donating uh, or voting with a donation. So each donation is a vote. So $10 is equals one vote. And each participant can have their own page and the page with the most votes wins the contest. Um, so this allows for a friendly competition um, and it's an opportunity to really have fun. Um, I'll show two examples where I think that they're, they're pretty fun events that um, are really unique. So this is the Colorado Pet Pantry, their pet parade and costume event. Um, so this is a community event that happens every year. Um, and they actually, this is, uh, this pet parade um, or festival, um, they choose a different animal organization to support each year. Uh, so for this year, for the for the sixth annual um, pet parade, they decided to support the Colorado Pet Pantry. So then the Colorado Pet Pantry um, created this fundraising page um, where individuals that wanted to uh, participate in the pet parade, they could register and um, make a donation um, to participate. So um, I also highlighted that they also really made it clear as to how the donation would impact their organization. They said a suggested $25 donation will feed five hungry pets for a month. So again, super straight to the point um, and a donor can immediately understand oh, if I donate $100, right, how many pets am I going to feed? If I donate $50, I'm say, I'm feeding 10 hungry pets, not just, not just five. Um, and as well, in addition, they also provided prizes. Um, so to encourage, again, to incentivize participants. So all pets get a ribbon of participation and commemor commemorative number bib. Um, they also had prizes for most photogenic pet, um, best trick. So they really became creative in terms of, again, how can we get people involved and engaged with our event? All right. So this is um, another uh, event or contest that I always love to showcase um, because I think it's really creative. And I think it shows that, again, you can have something that isn't in a specific um, space. It can be virtual and still be really fun and competitive. So this is the Toucan Rescue Ranch, their call for artists. So um, every year they have an art contest where they invite supporters, no matter what age, to um, submit artwork that they then showcase. And then individuals can then vote on the artwork that they love the most. And then the artwork that has the most votes or gifts associated to it, um, it will be printed out on a t-shirt that people can purchase. Um, so here's just an example. So um, they specified that $1 donated is one vote and the minimum donation is $5. They had two different categories. They had youth and adult, and they also had prizes for first, second, and third. And on the right side, you see um, how they displayed each um, 
each uh, artwork that was submitted to them. Um, so I think this is just another great idea to engage with your community, to get people involved and also really get them excited. Um, you know, I'm sure so many friends and family want to support, um, you know, all of the artists that submitted work to so that they can see the t-shirt and have that printed and purchase that as well. All right. And the last thing in terms of fall fundraising is your end of year campaign. Um, so Giving Tuesday or kind of towards the end of November, it's your opportunity to really uh, fo start focusing on end of year um, because donors do give on Giving Tuesday and in addition to end of year. So how do you harness these giving opportunities? So two ways. You can use Giving Tuesday as a way to launch your year-end campaign. So these can be two different things. So your fall campaign or Giving Tuesday can be separate from your year-end campaign, but it can be a way to start that language. Um, it can be a separate campaign for end of year, or it can kind of flow together um, so that your uh fall campaign goes until the end of December. So it's ongoing within the fall. Um, when you're thinking about your fall campaign, you also want to make sure that any individual donors or any donors that you haven't retained, that you're making that follow up during the end of year um, to, again, make sure that you're harnessing um, all of your resources as possible. All right, so um, just a couple of resources that are available and then I'll go through questions. So um, we have our support uh, our support form if you have any questions about the platform, um, any future webinars, our eBooks and our blog. Um, our next webinar is a Giving Tuesday webinar. It's Small But Mighty, Giving Tuesday 2024 Tips for Small Nonprofits. Um, so if you're interested in the best way to take advantage of Giving Tuesday, if you're a small nonprofit, I would definitely recommend registering and I have the link there to register. And now I will jump into any questions. Okay. Okay, one of these questions. Um, okay, looks like most of these events are planned by the nonprofit. So a lot of the examples that I showed are... Um, are events that are planned by the nonprofit. Um, but in terms of the scale of your event, um, how you want to do that, that's, again, as I mentioned, it can be something that's very small and can be a test trial. Like I said, it could be just a meetup, a happy hour meetup at a public park. Um, it can be, you know, inviting supporters to come to your office. Um, but also, it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be events that you specifically plan. It can also be events within your community. Um, so I would say look at your uh, local county or town's website for any events. You can reach out to them to see how you can partner. i um, definitely seen organizations that have used events within a community um, as a way to uh, raise funds. Um, so for example, if there's already a walkathon going on um, for, you know, a different organization or um, a different, you know, uh, a different event, um, you can reach out and see how you can um, collaborate with them um, and how you can um, partner with uh, your local events. How can we, um, how can we be strategic uh, around multiple tasks in such a short period of time without feeling like we're always asking for money. In Colorado, we have Giving Tuesday and then Colorado Gives. I like to tie at least one of these to a campaign like you're giving us examples for. Anything else to think about during a big ask season to not exhaust our small donor base? Yeah, I think if that's one of your concerns, I think um, there's different strategies you can utilize for that. So Again, I think going back to the first um, topics that we talked about in terms of really understanding what are you raising funds for? I think it's really easy to, right, as nonprofits, right? Um, I, I, I volunteer for a nonprofit uh, and we're all volunteer run, um, run. So we are, you know, our strategy is like, hey, <laughs> we need money. Uh, we're all volunteer run, we need help. Um, 
but that's not really going to be impactful or effective to donors, right? So thinking about exactly what are your goals are from a numerical standpoint, from an impact standpoint, because yes, it can be a lot to ask for money, but I would frame it as what is the impact that you're asking donors to make, right? So if you are, you know, I'm going to just make something up. Um, if you run a rescue, right? What are animal stories that you can share and how can you frame it as not just, hey, can you just give us money? Or we have, uh, we want to get 30 new rescues, right? And we want to rescue 30 new dogs in the new year. Um, with your support, we can support this dog and share stories of the dogs that you've rescued in the past. So I think framing it in terms of, again, the impact that a gift can make and not just, hey, can we donate? We need your help. Um, I think that's helpful. And I think in terms of the just two, if you have two events that you're participating in, um, you can make it cohesive and you can make it flow into each other. And you can also incorporate strategies like a matching grant, right? So if you can have two different matching grants where that's the the ask and it's it's not um, repetitive because it could be you have a Giving Tuesday match that's, hey, on this day, if you donate um, or if you give, you can make double the impact on this day. And then Colorado Gives is we need 20 donors or we also have another match, et cetera. So it's not as repetitive and it kind of, again, has a reason to why you're asking to give and um, encourages them to give at that time. I hope that helps answer your question. It was helpful. Um, for the events that are hosted on special days, are you asking for money at the event or are they cultivation events? Um, I think definitely having the opportunity to ask for money or to have an opportunity for people to donate is important. Um, so it can be just a cultivation of an event. So for example, um, this is not a special day fundraiser, but the nonprofit I volunteer for, we host, um, different, um, it's a, organization that um, invites immigrants to share their skills, um, their stories at different events. Um, so at those events, um, we have a, a, a codes and text to give um, to invite participants, to invite donors to give and support the cause. And they can see in person, right, like all of the different immigrants and all the different speakers and their skill sets that they have. Um, so you can have it be a cultivation event, but you can also incorporate giving to that as well. Is there a cost to participate as a donation? Um, so it depends. So some have a registration fees and they kind of use that as a donation. Some don't. And it's really just they're trying to get people to participate and fundraise and the donations come through the supporters. Um, okay, uh, yes, for the Giving Tuesday webinar, um, I can add that to the chat. Um, and I, I will actually, uh, I don't have the link with me right now, so I can, um, I will send that in the follow-up email. So if you want to register for the Giving Tuesday webinar, um, it will be in the follow-up email for you guys. Um, I don't see any other questions. For major donors uh, prospects, is it better to steward the donor instead of getting a smaller gift at the event or okay to get the small gift and then go back? Um, yeah, I think so. If you're talking about for a first time donor, I'm not sure if um, if that's what you're talking about, if you're like, should I ask for a large amount at first or should I, you know, focus on smaller gifts? Um, again, I would, I think it depends on, you know, who, who the donor is and if you know, like their impact, et cetera. Um, so I think there's a lot of variables that really depends on that question, but I think you, again, it kind of all goes back to the impact of it. And that's what I would focus on, right? Because, Every organization here, right, the donation amounts that are impactful for your organization is going to be different, right? For some, 
$500 is really a lot and you really just need to focus on $10 gifts or $25 gifts. For others, $500 is really impactful in terms of like, it's, you know, that's really the thing that makes a difference because it maybe it hosts just one weekly event that you do, right? For my organization, maybe it just hosts one of our uh, speaking events that we have. It really just depends on your organization and that. Um, but I think it depends on the individual. So I'm sorry, that's not answering your question so much. It's really dependent on the variables. But um, I think at the end of the day, framing it in terms of the impact that it can make. And if you think that person is able to do that, um, I think it might be worth it. Um, it just it just depends. So I'm sorry if that didn't answer your question. Okay, is there anything, any other questions? Okay, I don't see any more. So um, just as a reminder, um, this webinar will be sent out via email uh, and it will, the recording as well with the slide deck. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'll put our email address, our support email address if you need anything. Um, we're always here to help. Um, and again, we're here to help support you during the craziest time of the year. I know there's a lot going on, so we want to be as helpful as we can. Um, there's one last thing. There will be a survey that popped up at the end. If there's any other fundraising topic that is really important or helpful that you want us to cover in a future webinar, let us know in the survey because that helps dictate some of the topics that we have for webinars. And that's really always helpful for us to see um, what we should focus on in future topics. All right. So thank you so much, everyone. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.